Welcome back, my fellow radiation nerds. When we think of naturally occurring radioactive elements, we mainly think of uranium, thorium, and maybe sometimes potassium. While those elements are the most common ones, there are many others that also have naturally radioactive isotopes. However, in most cases, they have very long half-lives, making them extremely hard to detect, especially without specialized equipment. But there are a few that can be measured with a sensitive Geiger counter or a scintillation detector. One of them is lutetium, with its radioactive isotope of lutetium-176. If you enjoy this content, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming uploads. Thanks, and now back to the video. Lutetium has been discovered independently by three scientists in the year 1907. A French scientist, George Orban, Austrian mineralogist Karl Auer von Welsbach, and an American chemist, Charles James. After years of dispute, George Orban has been named by the scientific community as the discoverer of the new element, and he named it Lutetium, after Lutetia, the ancient Roman name for the city of Paris. Lutetium is a rare earth element with an atomic number of 71. It is the last element in the lanthanide series, and it shares many of the chemical properties with other elements in the group. In nature, it has only two isotopes, a stable lutetium-175 and a radioactive lutetium-176, with an abundance of 2.6%. It undergoes a beta decay with an average energy of 182 keV turning it into hafnium-176 with a half-life of 37.8 billion years. And in the process, it also emits gamma rays at 88, 202, and 307 keV. What is interesting about lutetium-176 is that both gamma rays at 202 and 307 keV are emitted in coincidence with each other, forming a summing peak at 509 keV. Today, lutetium doesn't really get much use due to its difficult production and very high costs, but it can be found in some specialized fields. One of its main uses is in the production of scintillation crystals, which are used in positron emission tomography. It can also be found in some alloys, where it improves the overall durability and heat resistance of the material. And thanks to its long half-life, lutetium-176 can be used for lutetium hafnium dating of meteorites. At the moment, I have two types of lutetium samples. The first one is in the form of LY cell scintillation crystals, which I got from a friend of mine. Thanks, James. I've linked his eBay store in the video description in case you want to grab one for yourself. When measured with my SC International Radiation Alert Ranger, which uses LND7317 pancake cell tube, I got a result of 73 counts per minute from a single crystal. That is only 30 counts per minute over the background radiation. When measured with my RACID, I got an increase of 15 counts per second in the activity, which is more than enough to build a gamma spectrum, however a good lead castle to minimize background radiation is definitely a good idea. As mentioned before, these crystals are used in positron emission tomography, and when exposed to radiation, they glow in a light blue color. My second sample is a metal coin made out of pure lutetium metal which measures around 24.3 mm and weighs around 8.43 grams. This means it should contain around 0.22 grams of pure lutetium-176 and have an activity of 432 becquerels. Compared to the LYSO crystal, the activity is a bit higher, and it reads around 160 counts per minute above background on my Ranger and 55 counts per second on my Racet. Since the coin is made out of pure metal, it is much denser than the LYSO crystal, and some of the activity gets self-shielded, which results in the readings being a bit lower than expected. In nuclear medicine, a synthetic isotope of lutetium-177 is used in targeted cancer therapy. It is produced by neutron irradiation of lutetium-176, and it decays through a beta emission into hafnium-177, with a half-life of 6.65 days and in the process it emits two gamma rays at 114 and 208 keV. A friend of mine works in a nuclear lab, and recently they received a fresh batch of lutetium-177 for their experiments, and he was kind enough to make some videos showcasing the samples and making a gamma spectrum. Big thanks for the help! Originally, this file contained 3.2 GB of lutetium-177, However, most of it has been already removed, and now there are only traces left. Despite that, the vials still read pretty high on the Radii B20 with over 60 counts per minute, 
and registered over 760 microsieverts an hour on the race set. Exploring the radioactivity and the history of lutetium and its isotopes was definitely a great experience, and I have learned a lot about it. I want to hear from you. Did you know about the natural radioactivity of lutetium? And do you have any samples of it? What other radioactive elements should I cover next? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If yes, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Also feel free to check out my Patreon page where you can support the channel financially and get some additional exclusive content. And remember, stay active.